prime minister elect of our great Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, let me say how grateful I am by your overwhelming response to the People's Partnership. And may I with you thank God for the guidance that has brought us here to this victory. Thank you. Thank you, God. So in 2015, the country essentially had the opportunity to be groundbreaking in a sense when we ushered in our first female prime minister. And not just any prime minister, but a prime minister who led a coalition government. We've had coalitions before, back in the NAR days, you know, we had that historical milestone. But Mrs. Pasad Bisasa was the leader of a fairly newborn coalition party, the People's Partnership, and she came in with a groundswell of support from the people of Trinidad and Tobago. She emerged as someone with leadership potential within the UNC. She made a very strong showing, and it was clear that she had a following in the party. It was an inspiration to the women of this country. And for the first time, we were having a female prime minister. So the country was essentially trying to exhale when she assumed office as prime minister. One of the, 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 the critical things was her ability to negotiate a partnership, knowing fully well that the PNM had a chance to win again if everybody was divided. And Manning's calling of a snap general election in 2010 was designed precisely to see if they, they would not have enough time to come together. Five weeks from the dissolution to the election day was a short period of time. And I don't think that in a predominantly male party helped her. But she managed to pull it off. She got everybody together. They all agreed. They signed the Faisabad Accord on the 21st of April, 2010. And the, the, the partnership was formed. She pulled it off. And she was able to, therefore, move towards an election victory. She, of course, was the most inexperienced leader, coming in with five months. But to her credit, she went for the full five years having to manage a difficult coalition arrangement. And I think that that is one of her, her major um, contributions that she has made into the politics, how to manage disparate entities in the face of severe conflict. in an effort to address the crime situation in Trinidad because crime has always been with us. It came to the point where, based on information that, that they had at the time, uh, you know, she had opted to declare a state of emergency to deal with it. It was, in my view, something that was warranted at the time, given what I know of the information before it. One of the signature statements coming out that that was you know evident on the platform when they were campaigning when they were in the hustings was axing the tax so that essentially is what catapulted them into government but we saw in Trinidad's history one of the largest budgets presented to the tune of 62 billion dollars and that was really evidence of the windfall that, that the People's Partnership was experiencing from high energy prices. So the energy sector was the anchor for economic growth and development in Trinidad and Tobago. We had them essentially starting the process of rolling back the fuel subsidy. That was an important issue as well, but they rolled back the fuel subsidy starting with premium gasoline on the argument that um, the people who could afford to buy vehicles that required premium gasoline could clearly afford to pay unsubsidized, pay for unsubsidized fuel. So that was an important, those were important kind of milestones in the Kamala Pasad Bisesa um, led People's Partnership. Of course she was the Minister of Education and had a plan for, for education, to change the education system and they, they, they approached it in Trinidad and Tobago. She got that chance to do that as Prime Minister introduction of laptops into schools so that was also one of the platforms that she came into power advocating that she would introduce laptops into the schools and give children laptops one of the things she advanced um, socially was that she, she created a great lift for that ministry for gender and child affairs you know that was you know a significant moment a signal moment of putting that ministry in the office of, of the Prime Minister. One of the things that also featured prominently in that period 
was the fact that the, the UNC-led government, the UNC-led People's Partnership, um, engaged in some mega projects, two of which, one is a Coover Hospital, um, which was built on the basis of a loan from the government of China. The mission she had, the vision she had for setting up this children's hospital, again, that, that she brought that in, in, in relatively quick time, given the, the time it, it, she came to, to government as prime minister. And of course, the UWI DB campus in Pinal, another mega project. And of course, a lot has been said about those two mega projects thereafter. But I think it also signaled because the DB campus was built by um, Chinese contractors. It also signaled an important part in our, in our national history in terms of the geopolitical relations. Well, I, she was from Separia. She went to primary school in Separia. She went to Irie High School in Separia of that generation. She was born in 1952, I remember quite well because we were born in the same year. After Ari High School, she went to University of the West Indies in St. Augustine and, and, and at, subsequent to that, she did an MBA at uh, the Lockjack School. He is the love of her life, Dr. Gregory Bissessa, and they, they had a great relationship. And they have one son, as far as I know, and one grandchild, again, who, from, from the best of what I could have understood at the time, she doted on that grandchild to a great extent. Mr. Prasad Bissessa appeared, maybe because she's a female, maybe because she's a mother, she appeared to be more caring. And when it came to the children and, and, the, and the poor, uh, those that are not as well off as, as other people. And maybe that was the, the, the mother in her coming out. Empathetic, and I don't want to, to raise the gender card, but I think it comes from being a female leader and having that kind of empathy. She was clearly a people's person. She came on in a very dramatic fashion. I remember, I think it was at the swearing or, or, or some period like that, when there were massive floods, floods in the South. And she put on her boots and she went out there and she was that, seemed to be that people-centered. And people thought, what a wonderful way to govern. I think one of the things that that warmed Trinbegonians to Mrs. Pasad Bisesa was that she was readily accessible to the people of Trinidad and Tobago and they could relate to her. And I think she was she was an unusual leader. Uh, I don't want to sound too chauvinistic, but it, it was strange for me, uh, as it was for a lot of people. Um, but I forgot that she was a female and just served her as prime minister. So for me, if I, if I had to describe Kamala Bissad Bissessa, you know, in, in a short way, I would say passionate, resilient, and resourceful.